Continuing on from our discussion of the average kinetic energy of gas particles in, ideal ga in an ideal gas, this video will discuss the average velocity of gas particles in an ideal gas. Okay, so from our previous video, we saw that the average translational energy of gas particles in an ideal gas is 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant times temperature. So the expectation value of the energy was just the expectation value of the kinetic energy, which was equal to 1 half mu squared, or 1 half times mass times velocity squared, the expectation value of that, or the average value of 1 half mu squared. Um, mass and 1 half are both constants. We're assuming that all the gas particles are the same uh, gas, so their mass is a constant. Factor that out. So we get that the average kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times the mass times the average velocity squared. Okay, so the average velocity squared is equal to 2 times the average kinetic energy over the mass, which if we substitute in, we have 2 over m times 3 halves kt. These 2s cancel out, so we get 3 kt over m. So here we have 3 times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature divided by the mass of an individual particle. And you'll note that this is also equal to 3 times the gas constant times the temperature times the molar mass of our gas in kilograms per mole. For the ideal gas equation, we have PV equals nRT, which is also equal to nKT. Number of moles times the gas constant equals number of particles times the Boltzmann constant. So the gas constant equals Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant, and the molar mass is Avogadro's number times the mass of an individual particle. So K over M is equal to R over big M. But take care to note that this is in kilograms per mole, is the SI unit of molar mass. Okay, so I mentioned that substitution there. Now that we have this value, um, that is the average value of the velocity squared. So if we take the square root of that value, we have what is called the root mean squared velocity. So this is the square root of the average value of the velocity squared. So sometimes indicated by the subscript URMS. So the root mean squared velocity of a gas is equal to the square root of 3 times the gas constant times temperature divided by the molar mass of a gas. So again here, the biggest thing to notice and not get tripped up in is the units. R is typically joules per mole Kelvin. Temperature in Kelvin, always. Molar mass in kilograms per mole. And that will give you the root mean squared velocity in meters per second, the SI unit of, of velocity. Okay, so what is the URMS in meters per second for various temperatures and gases? So if we substitute in the values that we have here, um, for helium, the molar mass is 0.004002 kilograms per mole. For N2, 28.02 grams per mole, or 0.02802 kilograms per mole, and 0.032 kilograms per mole for oxygen. So substituting in those values here for various temperatures, at absolute zero, as you might expect, there is no kinetic energy and no velocity of anything, no thermal, no thermal energy, no kinetic energy at zero Kelvin. But notice that even at fairly modest temperatures, we have velocities for these gas particles that is in hundreds of meters per second. So for example, at 298.15 Kelvin, 25 Celsius, room temperature by chemist standards, nitrogen, which is the dominant constituent of air, is moving at 515 meters per second. O2 being a little bit heavier, and the velocity depending on the inverse square root of the mass, O2 moving at about 480 meters per second, whereas a lighter gas like helium would be moving at 1363 meters per second. So the nitrogen gas, every every individual second is moving about 500 meters, so every two seconds moving a kilometer. Now that's very, very fast. We don't feel the, we don't feel the air moving that fast past us because they're not displacing 
in a get in all in the same direction they're they're moving that 515 meters per second all in random directions you only feel things like wind or the net effect of air pushing whenever the gas molecules are moving on average in the same direction all of these molecules at these various temperatures are moving at these very high speeds but in random directions such that the net result is the air is moving at uh, hundreds of times slower than the individual particles inside of it is.